Hello again and welcome to another edition of Southern Country. Hi, I'm Herb Southern. Welcome to the show, my friends. Pauline and I are here in Kempton, Pennsylvania. Why are we here in Kempton, Pennsylvania, Pauline? Well, Herb, we're here at a train station, WKNS, and we're here with John Hartman, who is the vice president of this organization, and he's going to tell us a little bit about WKNS and particularly what it stands for. Hi, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, WKNS is the Wanamaker, Kempton, and Southern Railroad, and we've been here for about 40 years operating tourist trains in this little part of Berks County, uh, west of Allentown, north of Reading. And we've been running steam trains and diesel trains now uh, throughout the season, including Santa Claus trips. And uh, basically everybody's here for families to have a good time. Uh, the railroad is Wanamaker, Kempton, and Southern. It's named for the two towns that we go between and a little bit of track down to the south. Well, it sounds great, and we're really looking forward to our train trip, which I understand the locomotive is getting heated up now as we speak. Exactly right. Okay, we're standing in front of a cute little red caboose, and in a minute, John's going to tell us a little bit about this cute little caboose. But before he does, John, you know I'm going to be taking that hat from you before the end of the show, okay? You watch. Stay tuned. All right, John, take it away. Hi. Uh, WKNS actually owns three cabooses, and this one is the most unique, though, because it only has four wheels. It's called a bobber caboose because of its rather poor riding qualities. Uh, it was built about 1910 and served the Lehigh New England Railroad, which is in the cement regions of Pennsylvania, up through Nazareth and that belt up that way in Bath. And here at the WKNS, we've acquired it and restored it, and it's due for yet another paint job, as wooden cars are very maintenance-intensive. But uh, we do use it once in a while on the trains and definitely on work trains. And the train crews sometimes sleep in it at night, too. Okay, well, thank you very much. Well, John, we're standing on a platform of a diesel locomotive. And we're interested in knowing some general information about this locomotive, like where did it come from, what year did it originate in, and how did it get here? Well, this locomotive came by truck from uh, Reading, Pennsylvania. It was originally built in 1942 by General Electric up in Erie and they used it for the U.S. Army, Savannah, Illinois Ordnance Depot. And then in later years, it served the steel mill down in Birdsboro, Pennsylvania. Uh, it weighs 45 tons. It's a very small diesel locomotive. Uh, the wheels are connected by side rods to make sure all four wheels drive, all four axles drive. And we use it here to shift cars around and to run special charters during the weekdays when we can't afford to fire up the steam engine. And during the month of September, we actually run train trips, the same route as a steam engine, but with the diesel locomotive. Gives us a chance to work on the steam engines uh, during nicer weather. Are there any of these left in, the, um, in production or any on, on the tracks yet? Uh, that's actually a good question. Believe it or not, General Electric still makes a 45-ton locomotive, but in South America. Um, North American railroading, very little call for an engine this small anymore. Um, so they're, they're still around, and there's quite a few of them left in North American little industrial plants, but you won't see them out on a big railroad anywhere. Like, like this railroad? Right. This is just a small railroad. This suits us quite well. And I understand this is not the locomotive we'll be using today for our trip. That's correct. Yeah, today we're actually going to go with the steam locomotive and uh, get some coal smoke and cinders for you and a whistle. Okay. Uh, steam as opposed to diesel. Right. Got it. <laughs> All right. We're standing in front of one of the passenger cars, and John's going to tell us a little bit about this car. Yeah, Pauline, this uh, coach is actually considered a combine car because it has mostly a passenger section but a little baggage section on the end. And it's used on our excursion trains here. This was freshly repainted, uh, built in 1918, and rebuilt again in the 1930s with an old ammonia-based air conditioning system, uh, which no longer works because we don't go fast enough to use it. But uh, it's a very nice car inside, has cloth seats, and the baggage section has a little piano, and we often use it for little parties and stuff on the train when people want to have a birthday party for their kids. Uh, it seats about 52 people right now, and uh, it's, a, it's a nice car. It's been rebuilt uh, a couple of times on the inside as well as the exterior. Okay, I heard the word party. That sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're standing in front of one of the railroad signals here at WKNS uh, train station, and John's going to tell us a little bit about it. Right. Uh, this signal is actually called a train order signal, and it's located in front of a station building. And the railroads used it to signal a train crew whether or not they had to stop and pick up orders. Um, the signal would be at green if they did not have to stop, and it could be changed to red if they had to stop and get the order. And the station agent would do that by simply coming out of his building, coming over here, and raising this handle. And that would throw the signal that's at the top of this pole to a position that tells the crew that they need to stop and get their orders. And after the train crew got their orders, he'd be able to drop that signal back down again and clear it for the next train. Okay. 
John, exactly what kind of orders are these conductors getting or engineers? That's a good question. These are actually written train orders that give them authority to operate down the track. This was used in a system before they had signals, colored signals along the railroad and electric you know, blocking of trains. It was a manual way to control trains so that they didn't hit each other. Well, we're wrapping up this edition of Southern Country, Pauline and John. Tell us where we're wrapping up this show at. Well, first of all, we're waiting here patiently for the train to pull out. I know well, we are. other people have already climbed aboard, but we are waiting patiently. And John, can you tell us a little bit else about the station? Sure. Yeah, we're here at the platform. The train is right behind us, uh, ready to pull out in a few minutes. And we're sitting at the gift shop. Uh, the train order board here says when the trains are leaving and when they're coming back. People bought their tickets at the building next door to us. They got their refreshments at the stand down the other direction. Everybody's been to the bathroom. Hopefully, they've been in the gift shop. And they're all going to climb aboard for their 40 minute train ride now. Question, John, are these the real names of the trains that are going? Lee I Limited and, and Blue Mountain Flyer and Berksy and. The Berksy is an original name for it. A lot of the other ones were made up with uh, the sort of the duchy names okay. of this area and maybe borrowed from some other railroads. But the Berksy is the Reading name that, for the train that ran on this line. Up until 1949, there was a real mm -hmm. passenger train here. Well, I oh. want to thank you two for being here. <laughs> well, thank you, and we're off to Wanamaker. We're off down the track. Right. Let's head down the track.